Lando Norris winning the Miami Grand Prix was a huge surprise to everyone, a twist which has made the 2024 season much more interesting. Miami highlighted certain weaknesses within the Red Bull RB20, which could potentially upset the Austrian team's dominant running in 2024. Considering the developments McLaren has made at Miami, coupled with the race-winning upgrades Ferrari are about to introduce next time at Imola, could Red Bull have a fight on their hands when it comes to defending both championships this season? It's safe to say that McLaren's upgrades at Miami are working wonders, a fact which is backed up by Lando Norris's maiden F1 race victory. McLaren turned up to the race at Florida with a huge upgrade package, 10 new parts to be exact, which included a new front wing, revised side pod inlets, revised front suspension geometry, updated underfloor design, updated side pods design, alongside revised upper body panels. These upgrades were only applied to Lando Norris's car, which is why the Brit was in a really good position to defend the race lead following the safety car restart, as well as was able to push Perez into making an early pit stop before the Sergeant Magnussen crash materialized. On the other hand, we saw Oscar Piastri maintaining a steady gap of three seconds to Red Bull's Max Verstappen during his first stint in a car which only acclaimed 50% of the upgrades Norris had during the weekend, which is worth mentioning. So from Imola onwards, we are going to see an entirely different MCL38 for Piastri, one that would be equal of Norris's challenger mounted with the upgrade package. McLaren has managed to understand the aerodynamic performance that has revolved around its chassis, much better than they were able to in the previous couple of seasons. Deep diving at the upgrades, we can clearly see that the McLaren car has improved its ability in keeping the tyres alive for a longer period of time, which explains Norris's fast lap times on old medium tyres. Also, the MCL38 has improved its ability of utilising the flow that passes underneath the car widening the car's overall performance window. On top of that, McLaren has improved the car's low-speed cornering performance drastically, which has been McLaren's Achilles heel for some time now. Formula Uno estimates the performance advantage McLaren's Miami upgrades to have provided to be about four tenths. While that was not evident during qualifying, the race pace certainly does highlight the step taken. After running the upgrades at Miami, even Andreas Stella was surprised to see the speed the MCL38 has gained with their latest upgrades, as they knew that these upgrades will be another good step. But to be in the fight amongst the RB20 and the SF24 is definitely not something that they were anticipating before. This is something even Max Verstappen did not forget to talk about, as the reigning world champion after taking a look at the data did reveal that regardless of the safety car, McLaren did genuinely have the pace in hand to challenge Red Bull for the race victory as the Dutchman specifically pointed out Norris's race pace on old mediums as unbelievable. Elaborating further, Verstappen went on to say, I didn't really see Norris in the beginning because I was more focused on Piastri behind and the Ferraris, but then I boxed and I heard the pace that he was doing on the used mediums and I was like, I mean, that is quite insane. I would never have been able to do so. So I knew even if there wouldn't have been a safety car that when we would have come out on fresh tires, I would have had to push on quite a lot to be able to keep him behind. Norris's track position during the start of the Grand Prix was something which worked against the British driver, as he was stuck behind Sergio Perez for most of his first stint, not able to overtake the Mexican, even with the DRS due to the superior efficiency the RB20 has in a straight line. So if McLaren want to improve on this front, to give them better options during the actual race, they would have to work their way up on Saturday. Because if it was Norris pushing Verstappen instead of Piastri, who knows, we could have had a different race on our hands. The other issue that Red Bull is facing here is Ferrari, because the Maranello team is the only one to have not brought any upgrades to their car yet this season, but are still the second fastest behind Red Bull in close competition with the Austrian squad. Miami has sent a fierce warning to the Scuderia, as McLaren are proving themselves to be worthy competitors. Taking a look at the overall race pace, Ferrari, McLaren and Red Bull were all on similar numbers, just decimals here and there. So considering how close the pack is up front now, both Leclerc and Vasseur are anticipating highly the upgrades their team is set to introduce at Imola. When talking about the Imola upgrades a bit further, Vasseur went on to imply that the top step of the podium is the target at Imola, adding, I'm sure that in Imola we will have a better race by putting everything together. We know that many have brought upgrades to these races, but we finished ahead. 
We are at the point in the development of the car where if you bring something, it's not a matter of seconds, but of tenths. It is not like a few years ago when everything brought three to four tenths. Without a doubt, we will be able to fight for victory in Imola. I believe there is a gap that varies from track to track and from compound to compound, which makes more of a difference than an update. We must focus on our job, which is making the most of what we have. The update we will bring to Imola will certainly help, but it doesn't all depend on that. It also depends on the work we will do on the track. It is also not helping that the RB20 seems to not have the performance advantage many seem to think it had. Miami once again exposed that the RB20 does not hold an advantage when it comes to tyre degradation, something which both Ferrari and now McLaren seems to be doing a better job at. Also, the RB20 seems to have a sluggish sweet spot, apparent from the constant minor complaints Verstappen has been making of recent, especially at Miami, about the car not turning as he desires it to. Now this could all be down to setup, but it is not something which we have seen of recently from Red Bull, until of recent close competition. Also, an inconsistent second driver is also piling the pressure on Red Bull, as Perez, instead of battling with the Ferraris and McLarens, was engaged in a battle with Hamilton for fifth position. More precisely was battling the W15. Former world champion Jensen Button reckoned that Red Bull would be smart to acknowledge a three-way fight here onwards, keeping a close eye on both Ferrari and McLaren. When talking about this further, Button added, the correlation between the simulator and the on-track data seems to be amazing at McLaren. The upgrades they had last year in Silverstone made a massive difference in terms of where the team will develop their car. It did what it said on the tin, and that is the most difficult thing in Formula 1. I think in the next couple of races, we are going to have an eye on them the whole time. And Red Bull is going to have their eyes on McLaren as well, not just Ferrari. So now it's very different in the way of thinking. Because coming into a race weekend now, Red Bull will know that they will be challenged from two teams, and the strategy would have to change a little. They've got to be on their toes the whole time. Red Bull were beaten on merit back at Miami, and it seems like they will have to keep their tactics sharp in order to continue the race-winning form from Imola onwards. Especially considering that now two teams are on the hunt. Of course, Imola will be an interesting weekend to watch, as Ferrari are bringing upgrades, and it will be interesting to see what they bring and where they land with those upgrades. Red Bull also have upgrades in the works for Imola, so it will be interesting from both ends. What do you guys think? Is Red Bull's dominant run coming to an end? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.